The sun hung low in the sky, casting golden rays across the beach as the waves lapped gently at the shore. Marcus, an adventurous and quick-thinking eleven-year-old, kicked at the sand with his bare feet, enjoying the simple pleasure of being near the ocean. He loved the sea. It was a part of his life, ever-present just like the small coastal town where he lived with his family. The air was salty, and the rhythmic sound of the waves always brought him peace. As he walked along the shore, Marcus's attention was caught by something unusual, a small figure in the water, flailing wildly. His heart skipped a beat. It took him only a moment to realize the person was in trouble. Without hesitation, Marcus sprinted toward the water, his instincts taking over. The girl, no more than ten years old, was struggling to stay afloat as the current pulled her further from shore. Marcus dived in, the cold water shocking his system. He swam swiftly, his strong strokes propelling him toward her. As he neared, he saw the terror in her eyes, her face pale and lips trembling. She was losing energy fast. Hold on, he called, his voice steady despite the adrenaline coursing through his veins. With great effort, Marcus reached her just in time, grabbing her around the waist and kicking with all his might to bring them both to shore. The waves seemed heavier now, fighting against him, but Marcus didn't let go, he couldn't let her slip away. When they finally made it to the shallows, Marcus dragged the girl onto the wet sand. She wasn't moving. Fear gripped him as he knelt beside her, checking if she was breathing. She wasn't. His heart pounded in his chest, but he remembered something his father had taught him. With shaking hands, he tilted her head back, pinched her nose, and began performing CPR, praying she would wake up. After what felt like an eternity, the girl coughed, sputtering seawater as she gasped for air. Relief flooded Marcus and he sat back, exhausted but thankful. The girl blinked, her wide eyes taking in her surroundings. She was alive, she was safe. Lily! A sharp voice pierced the air. Marcus looked up to see a tall woman running toward them, her face pale with panic. Mrs. Patterson, Lily's mother, dropped to her knees beside her daughter, clutching her close. Oh my God, Lily, are you okay? Mrs. Patterson's voice wavered as she examined her daughter, who, still shaken, managed a small nod. Then the woman's gaze shifted to Marcus. Her eyes scanned him briefly, taking in his soaked clothes, his trembling hands, his dark skin. For a moment, her gratitude seemed genuine. Thank you, she said, her voice stiff. You saved her life. Marcus, breathless and still recovering from the ordeal, nodded quietly. He wasn't expecting anything in return. He was just glad the girl was safe. But something in Mrs. Patterson's expression changed, growing colder. Her posture straightened, and though she offered a small smile, it felt forced, distant. You were very brave, she continued, her tone now more formal. I must offer you something. A reward, perhaps. Marcus shook his head immediately. No, ma'am, he said, his voice quiet but firm. I didn't do it for a reward. Mrs. Patterson's lips pressed into a thin line, her eyes flickering with something unreadable. Well, if you change your mind. She trailed off, standing up and pulling Lily close to her side, as if she suddenly remembered the gap between them a gap of class, of status, of everything that separated Marcus's modest life from the wealth she and Lily lived in. As they walked away, Marcus watched them go, the feeling of unease settling in his chest. He had saved Lily's life, but the look in Mrs. Patterson's eyes left him with a strange, hollow feeling. He wasn't expecting a grand gesture of thanks, but the distance she maintained between them, even after he had rescued her daughter, was palpable. He turned back to the sea, the waves now calm and steady, as if nothing had happened. But Marcus knew something had changed, not just for Lily, but for himself as well. Lily couldn't stop thinking about Marcus after the day he saved her. Despite the comfort of her luxurious home and all the toys and distractions her parents provided, she felt an emptiness that none of those things could fill. Her parents were always busy, especially her father, Mr. Patterson, who seemed consumed by his work. Her mother was strict, focused on maintaining their family's status and connections in the wealthy community. But Marcus, he had shown her something different, something real. Against her mother's strict orders to forget about that boy, Lily found herself wandering the beach again, hoping to see Marcus. 
She had barely exchanged words with him after the incident, but his bravery had left a mark on her heart. One afternoon, while walking along the shore, she spotted him, sitting on a rock and skipping stones across the water. Without thinking, she ran up to him. Hi, she called out, a little out of breath. Marcus looked up, surprised but not unwelcoming. Hi, he responded cautiously, still unsure why this girl, the daughter of a millionaire, would want anything to do with him. I never got to thank you, properly, I mean, for saving me, Lily said, fidgeting with the hem of her dress. Marcus shrugged, feeling awkward. You don't have to. I just did what anyone would do, he replied, though they both knew that wasn't true. A brief silence followed, but then something remarkable happened. Lily smiled. It was a genuine warm smile that wasn't wrapped in formality or distance. Marcus found himself smiling back. Over the next few weeks the two began meeting regularly at the beach, forming an unlikely friendship. They played simple games, catching crabs, building sandcastles and racing each other along the shore. Marcus introduced her to his favourite things, climbing the old oak tree near his house, skipping stones and sneaking pieces of his mother's homemade cornbread. One afternoon Lily came over to Marcus's house for the first time. It was small and humble, nothing like her own grand home but there was a warmth to it that made Lily feel at ease. Marcus's father, David, greeted her with a kind smile. You must be the young lady Marcus talks about, he said, his deep voice steady. David was a hard-working man, always reminding Marcus to stay humble and kind, no matter what others thought of them. He watched with quiet approval as Marcus and Lily laughed and played, seeing the bond forming between them. Lily loved the simplicity of Marcus's life. There were no fancy parties, no stiff formal conversations, just genuine moments. In contrast, when Marcus visited Lily's world, he was fascinated by the grandeur of her home, but felt out of place. The grand halls, polished floors, and expensive furniture all seemed foreign to him, and the fancy parties were overwhelming. Lily too seemed out of place in those moments, like she didn't quite belong in the world of privilege she had been born into. But while they found joy in their growing friendship, tension also began to surface. Mrs. Patterson, disapproving of Lily spending time with Marcus, tried to put a stop to their meetings. She reminded Lily constantly that their social divide was too wide to bridge, insisting that she should focus on making appropriate friends, children from wealthy families like their own. At the same time, Marcus began to sense that invisible walls had been built between them. He liked being with Lily, but he couldn't ignore the whispers in his own community or the stares they received when they were together in public. He was torn between the comfort of their friendship and the growing awareness that, no matter how close they felt, the world saw them differently. Still, despite the disapproval of others, Lily and Marcus continued to meet, finding comfort in the simplicity of their time together, each day, they grew more aware of the challenges ahead, but also more determined to hold on to the connection they had built, one that transcended the worlds they came from. As summer stretched on, the friendship between Marcus and Lily grew stronger, but so did the challenges they faced. At first, their worlds had seemed like something they could navigate together, a bridge between two very different lives. But reality, with all its complexities, began to intrude. Marcus noticed it first, in the subtle ways people looked at him when he was with Lily. At the market or on the beach, whispers would follow them. What's that boy doing with her? She's from the Patterson family. What would they think? The murmurs didn't stop, even among his friends. Some of them teased him, others were more direct. You think she's going to take you seriously? You're not one of them? His father, David, who had always taught Marcus the values of humility and kindness, sat him down one evening. Son, he said gently, I know you care about Lily, and I know she cares about you. But the world isn't always kind to people who come from different places. People will judge you for it, and it's going to be tough. You have to decide if you're ready for that. Marcus sat quietly, the weight of his father's words sinking in. He had always looked up to David a man of quiet strength and wisdom, but this warning filled him with doubt. 
Could he ever truly fit into Lily's world, or worse, could she fit into his? Every time they were together, the stares and whispers reminded him of how different they were. And as much as he wanted to ignore it, it gnawed at him, casting a shadow over their friendship. Meanwhile, Lily's world wasn't any easier. Her mother, Mrs. Patterson, redoubled her efforts to arrange appropriate playdates with children from other wealthy families. She invited them over to their grand house, pushing Lily to befriend them. But Lily found these new friendships shallow and forced. The other girls cared about things she didn't. Fancy dresses, expensive toys, and the next extravagant party. They didn't understand the simple joys she shared with Marcus, and they certainly didn't understand why she enjoyed spending time with a boy from a different world. At home the pressure mounted. Her mother's constant disapproval of her bond with Marcus weighed on Lily's heart. You need to focus on making friends that reflect who you are, where you come from, Mrs. Patterson would say, as if Lily's worth was tied to their wealth and status. Lily wanted to shout, but who am I really? She knew that being rich wasn't the only thing that defined her, and Marcus was the only one who made her feel like it wasn't. Lily tried to push back against her mother's expectations, but it became harder each day. Her father, Mr. Patterson, was too busy with work to notice her growing unhappiness, leaving Lily feeling more alone. The more she was forced into her family's world of status and privilege, the more she longed for the genuine connection she had with Marcus. But she sensed that even he was starting to pull away just when she needed him most. For Marcus, the internal conflict was unbearable. He loved their adventures together. The laughter, the easy friendship they had built. But he couldn't shake the feeling that the world didn't want them to belong together. Every time he saw her, the gap between them seemed wider. He began to withdraw, showing up less often at the beach, finding excuses to avoid their usual spots. He didn't know how to tell Lily that it wasn't her, but the weight of everything, the judgment of others, the invisible walls between their lives, was becoming too much. Lily, noticing the distance growing between them, felt a deep sadness creep into her days. She didn't understand why Marcus was pulling away, but she could feel the strain on their friendship. Their once carefree moments now felt heavy, overshadowed by the realities of their different worlds. They both struggled with the same question. Could their friendship survive the barriers society had built between them? Marcus doubted whether he would ever be good enough for her world, while Lily resented the shallow expectations her family placed on her. Their friendship, once so simple and pure, was now strained by race, class, and the judgment of those around them. The grand chandelier cast shimmering light across the room as guests, dressed in their finest attire, mingled at the lavish party hosted by the Pattersons. It was the event of the season, with the wealthiest families in town gathered in the grand halls of Lily's home. But amid the laughter and chatter, tension simmered beneath the surface. Lily had insisted that Marcus be invited, despite her mother's sharp objections. Mrs. Patterson had given in reluctantly, her discomfort clear. He won't fit in, Lily, she had warned. He doesn't belong at these kinds of events. But Lily, determined and tired of her mother's constant interference, had fought back. Marcus had saved her life. He deserved to be there. Marcus arrived at the party dressed in his best clothes, simple but neat. As he entered the grand estate, he felt the weight of eyes on him. The enormous chandeliers, ornate decorations, and the polished elegance of the house overwhelmed him. He had never been in a place like this, and it was clear that many guests were wondering why someone like him had been invited. Lily, spotting him from across the room, waved excitedly. Marcus forced a smile, but inside he felt out of place like he was walking into a world that wasn't meant for him. He tried to shake off the unease and joined Lily, who welcomed him with a warm hug. For a while, being with her calmed his nerves. They laughed, talked, and played little games by the grand piano. But as the evening progressed, the whispers started. A few wealthy guests made no effort to hide their discomfort at Marcus's presence. Who is he? a woman muttered under her breath. I didn't know this was a charity event. Another man, loud and crass, commented, Surprising the help can attend parties now. Each word stung, and though Marcus tried to ignore it, 
the humiliation built inside him. He felt small, like an intruder in a world that would never accept him. The final blow came when one guest, an older man with a pompous air, approached Marcus and said with a condescending smile, You're quite brave to come here, aren't you? You must be very proud of yourself, mingling with all these important people. Marcus could barely breathe. His chest tightened as shame and anger swirled inside him. Without saying a word, he turned and walked out of the room, the walls of the grand house feeling like they were closing in on him. Lily, sensing something was wrong, ran after him. Marcus, wait, she called, catching up to him outside the house. The cool night air hit them as Marcus stopped, unable to hold back the emotions that had been building up all night. I can't do this, Lily, he said, his voice breaking. I don't belong here. You don't understand what it's like. They look at me like I'm nothing, like I shouldn't even be here. His words were heavy with pain, and Lily could see the hurt in his eyes. Marcus, please don't say that, she pleaded, tears forming in her eyes. You belong with me. I don't care about what they think. I care about you. But your world, it's not mine, Lily, Marcus replied, his voice strained. I've tried to pretend it doesn't matter, but it does. It hurts too much. I don't fit in, and I never will. Lily's heart broke as she watched Marcus turn and walk away, the darkness swallowing him as he disappeared down the road. She stood there, stunned, her mind racing with anger, confusion, and sadness. Fuming, she stormed back into the house and confronted her mother, who had been watching the whole scene unfold from a distance. This is your fault, Lily shouted, her voice trembling with emotion. You drove him away because you couldn't stand the thought of me being friends with someone who isn't rich like us. You and your stupid rules, your stupid prejudices. Mrs. Patterson, shocked by Lily's outburst, struggled to maintain her composure. Lily, calm down. You don't understand how the world works. People like Marcus... People like Marcus? Lily interrupted, tears streaming down her face. You mean good, kind people? People who care about more than money and status? I'm done with this. I'm done with you. She turned and ran upstairs, slamming her bedroom door behind her. Mrs. Patterson stood frozen, the harsh reality of her daughter's words hanging in the air. For the first time she realized that her rigid beliefs had cost Lily something precious. Yet, despite the reflection stirring inside her, she remained firm, unable to fully let go of the ideals she had built her life around. Upstairs Lily sat by her window staring out at the night sky. The stars twinkled faintly but for the first time in a long while they offered no comfort. All she could think about was Marcus, and how the walls of her world had driven him away. She felt trapped between her family's expectations and her true feelings, and she didn't know how to make things right. In the days following the party, Lily withdrew from the world around her. She refused to attend any more family gatherings or social events, retreating into the solitude of her room. The once lively and spirited girl now seemed hollow, her laughter replaced by a heavy sadness. She spent her days staring out of her bedroom window, her thoughts consumed by the loss of Marcus and the harsh reality of the divide between them. She missed him deeply. Their games, their conversations, the simplicity and joy of being together. Without Marcus, everything felt empty. Mr. Patterson, noticing his daughter's growing unhappiness, became concerned. He had always been a busy man, consumed by work and the demands of running his business, leaving little time for family, but now for the first time in a long while he saw how distant he had become from his own daughter. One evening, after dinner, he gently knocked on Lily's bedroom door. Lily? he called softly. Can I come in? Lily didn't answer at first, but after a moment she opened the door slightly, her eyes red from crying. Mr. Patterson stepped inside, sitting down on the edge of her bed. He looked at his daughter, his heart heavy with guilt for having neglected her emotions for so long. What's going on, sweetheart? he asked, his voice full of genuine concern. You haven't been yourself lately. Lily hesitated, wiping her tears. It's Marcus, Dad, she said quietly. I lost him. Mom drove him away because he doesn't fit into our world and I'm supposed to just go along with it like it doesn't matter, but it does. It matters more than anything. Mr. Patterson sighed, realizing how deeply Lily had been affected by the situation. 
He had always prided himself on providing for his family, ensuring they had everything they needed, except for what truly mattered most, his attention and understanding. Lily, I've been thinking a lot lately, he began choosing his words carefully, about our family, about you. I know I haven't been around as much as I should be, and I'm sorry for that. But more than anything, I've come to realize that your happiness is what's most important. Not money, not social appearances, but you. Lily looked up at her father, surprised by his words. She had never heard him speak so openly before. If Marcus makes you happy, Mr. Patterson continued, then that's what matters. I don't care what people think. I don't care about the rules society tries to impose on us. You deserve to have friends who make you feel seen and valued. Tears welled up in Lily's eyes again, but this time they were different. Tears of relief, of understanding. Her father's words gave her the validation she had been yearning for. Meanwhile, Marcus was facing his own struggles. He had been avoiding the beach where he and Lily used to play and keeping to himself. His father, David, noticed the change in him and decided it was time to step in. One afternoon, as Marcus sat quietly on the porch, David joined him, sitting down with a soft sigh. You've been awfully quiet these days, son, David said, looking out at the horizon. Something's weighing heavy on you. Marcus didn't respond immediately, but he knew his father wouldn't let it go. It's Lily, he finally admitted. I don't think I can be part of her world, Dad. It's too hard. People look at me like I don't belong, and I'm not sure if I do. David listened carefully, his expression thoughtful. You know, Marcus, he began, you have a rare gift, your kindness, your bravery. It's what made you jump into that water and save Lily without a second thought and it's what makes you a good person, no matter what the world says about who belongs where. Marcus looked up at his father, searching for reassurance. The world's always going to try to put you in a box, son, David continued, but you don't have to stay there. You can break free. If Lily's friendship means something to you, and if you care about her the way you say you do, then maybe it's worth fighting for. Marcus nodded slowly, his father's words sinking in. He had been so focused on the obstacles in front of him that he had forgotten the courage that had brought him and Lily together in the first place. With their family's encouragement, both Marcus and Lily found the strength to face their fears. They knew the path ahead wouldn't be easy, but they were determined to break free from the expectations and limitations that society had placed on them. There was no turning back now. They had to fight for their friendship, for each other. The next day, both Marcus and Lily made a decision. It was time to meet again, to talk, to make sense of everything that had happened. They knew the challenges wouldn't disappear overnight, but with clearer understanding and renewed determination, they felt ready to face the world together. The sun dipped low in the sky, casting golden hues across the horizon as Lily stood at the beach, her heart racing with anticipation. This was the place where it had all begun where she had met Marcus and felt an instant connection that transcended their differences. She had missed him dearly, and the thought of their reunion filled her with both excitement and nervousness. As the waves gently lapped against the shore, Lily spotted Marcus approaching. He walked slowly, his head down, but when he looked up and saw her, a smile broke across his face. It was the kind of smile that melted away the worries that had clouded her heart for weeks. Hey. Marcus said a bit shyly as he approached her. Hey, Lily replied, her voice brightening. I'm so glad you came. They stood for a moment in silence, the familiar sounds of the beach enveloping them. The wind tousled their hair and for a brief second it felt like time had stood still, just like in the old days when they played without a care. Lily took a deep breath, gathering her courage. I've missed you, Marcus. I've been thinking a lot about everything that happened, and I want you to know I don't care about what anyone else thinks. You're my friend, and that's what matters most to me. Marcus's heart swelled at her words. You don't know how much that means to me, Lily. I've been so scared, scared of what people would say about us, about how different we are. It's not you that I was afraid of. It was the world out there the way people judge. Lily stepped closer, her eyes locked onto his. We can't let them control our friendship, we're stronger than that. I care about you, Marcus, not because of your background or what others might say, but for who you are. A wave of relief washed over Marcus. 
I promise I won't let fear get in the way anymore. No matter what anyone says, we'll be friends, right? Forever, Lily affirmed, and they shared a smile that felt like the first light of dawn breaking after a long night. But just as they were lost in their moment, Mrs. Patterson appeared from the path leading to the beach. She had come to find Lily, her expression unreadable. The sight of her made the air thicken with tension. Lily, she called, her voice firm but softer than before. The kids turned, caught off guard by her presence. Lily felt a wave of dread wash over her, but as she looked into her mother's eyes she noticed something different, an uncertainty, perhaps even a hint of regret. I saw you two together, Mrs. Patterson began, her gaze flicking between her daughter and Marcus, and I... I wanted to talk. Lily braced herself, ready for a fight, but Mrs. Patterson took a deep breath. I've been doing a lot of thinking. You're right, Lily. I've let my fears and prejudices blind me to what truly matters. Seeing you two together, it made me realize how precious this friendship is. I can't stand in the way of that. Marcus felt a mix of emotions. Part of him wanted to be angry with her, while another part longed for understanding. You don't have to accept everything right away, he said cautiously but I hope you can see that Lily and I care about each other. Mrs. Patterson nodded slowly, the corners of her mouth softening. I don't fully understand it yet, but I want to try. If you truly care for each other, then maybe I should learn to accept that. Lily's heart soared, but she sensed that Mrs. Patterson wasn't fully transformed. Still, it was a step forward, a glimmer of hope that perhaps with time change was possible. I just want you both to be happy. Mrs. Patterson added, looking directly at Marcus. And I want to support you in that, even if it's difficult for me. With newfound resolve, Lily stepped forward, taking her mother's hand in hers. Thank you, Mom. This means so much to me. As the sun began to set, casting a warm glow around them, the three stood together. A mother, a daughter, and a boy who had bridged the gap between their worlds. In that moment, tensions began to dissolve, and the ocean breeze carried with it the promise of a brighter future. They were all learning and growing, each one taking steps towards understanding and acceptance. Marcus smiled, his heart feeling lighter than it had in weeks. With Lily by his side and Mrs. Patterson's reluctant blessing, he finally felt like he could be true to himself, no matter what the world said. And as they stood together at the beach, the horizon stretched before them, endless and full of possibilities. The sun shone brightly on the day of the town hall ceremony, illuminating the small stage set up in the heart of the community. Marcus was puzzled as he walked through the crowd, clutching the crisp, white invitation that had arrived in the mail a week earlier. The words, honoring bravery and kindness, printed in elegant script had caught his eye, but he had no idea what it meant. As he looked around, he spotted Lily waving excitedly from a nearby group of friends. Her radiant smile was infectious, and for a moment, Marcus felt a rush of warmth in his chest. They had grown even closer since the day they reconciled at the beach, spending countless afternoons together, sharing stories, dreams, and laughter. Hey, Marcus, Lily called, running up to him. Are you ready for this? I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Not really sure what to expect, he replied, scratching the back of his head. I just got this invitation. Do you think they're giving out awards or something? Just then, Mr. Patterson stepped onto the stage and the crowd fell silent. He was dressed in a sharp suit, looking both proud and a bit nervous. Marcus felt a flutter of anxiety as he realized Lily's father was about to speak in front of everyone. Thank you all for coming today, Mr. Patterson began, his voice steady. We are here to honor a young boy whose actions not only saved my daughter's life, but have inspired our community. Today, we're establishing the Marcus Johnson Scholarship, a fund to support young people in our town who show extraordinary bravery and kindness, just like Marcus. Gasps of surprise filled the air, and Marcus stood frozen, disbelief etched on his face. Lily beamed at him, her eyes shining with pride. Marcus, that's incredible, she whispered, squeezing his hand. Mr. Patterson continued. This scholarship will help provide opportunities for those who might not have them otherwise, reminding us that true courage comes from the heart. Marcus, please come up here. With a mixture of excitement and nerves, 
Marcus stepped forward, feeling all eyes on him. As he climbed the steps to the stage, his heart raced. He glanced back at Lily, who gave him an encouraging thumbs up. Marcus, Mr. Patterson said, his tone warm. I want to thank you personally. You showed not just bravery, but compassion. Your selfless act has made a lasting impact on our lives and our community. As the crowd erupted in applause, Marcus felt tears prick at his eyes. It was overwhelming to be recognized for something he had done without a second thought. He took the microphone, his voice shaky but determined. I didn't do it for a reward, he said, looking out at the faces in the crowd. I did it because Lily was in trouble and I knew I had to help. I'm just glad she's okay. The applause grew louder and he caught sight of his father, David, standing proudly in the crowd with tears in his eyes. He could feel the love and support radiating from his family, and it filled him with gratitude. After the ceremony as the crowd dispersed, Marcus found himself standing at the beach with Lily once again. The waves crashed rhythmically against the shore, and the golden sun began to set, casting a beautiful glow over the water. Can you believe this? Lily asked her eyes sparkling with excitement. A scholarship in your name. You deserve it, Marcus. I never thought anything like this would happen, he replied, still in awe. It feels unreal. It's real and it's just the beginning, Lily said, her voice filled with conviction. You've shown everyone that bravery can come from anywhere. And it's not just about being recognized, it's about how your actions inspire others. Marcus smiled, realizing that they had both come a long way. You know, it feels good to think that maybe I can fit into both worlds now, the one I came from and the one I've seen with you. Lily nodded, gazing out at the horizon. We can make a difference together, and no matter what happens, we'll always have each other. As they stood side by side, watching the waves roll in, Marcus felt a surge of hope for the future. Life would continue to present challenges, but with courage, compassion, and the strength of their friendship, he knew they could overcome anything. The sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with brilliant hues of orange and pink, and in that moment they understood. True connections transcend social, racial, and economic boundaries. Acts of kindness and bravery ripple through life, challenging prejudices and creating unexpected opportunities for growth and change. Hand in hand they turned to leave the beach, ready to face whatever came next, together.